that is the art, I think, of preserving food. It's not so much putting it in a can and putting it through the canner and there you go and trying to find a way to use it. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills and welcome to our channel. And today I'd like to do something a little bit um, different and hopefully interesting. And uh, it, it does seem as though many, many of you are definitely interested in food preservation of all kinds, whether it's dehydrating, um, canning, uh, freezing, or fermenting. And maybe some of the uh, lucky ones of you have one of these freeze dryers and you can do freeze drying. I don't have one of those so I can't comment on them. But today, but today I would like to focus on oh, just three different food products and it uh, doesn't really matter which method of preservation you prefer. Um, I'm going to highlight three of mine and then I would like everyone to uh, <laughs> Uh, to include what they would present as their three, whether it's Maine, whether it's the ones that they've um, uh, preserved the most throughout the year, whether it is the one they like the most, whatever the reason for you wanting to present those three, I would ask that you choose three and put it forward and that way we can all share ideas with each other. Okay. So the first one I'm going to come up with, and I'll probably go into reasons why I've chosen the three that I have. Um, number one on my list, which is, should be a given, would be tomatoes. And I can tomato puree every year, bushels and bushels and bushels, depending on how many I have in stock, how much I want uh, in um, to keep in stock, how much I give away to family members. This is the one item that family members will come to me and say, Mom, do you have a few jars of tomatoes that I can have? Now, I just make tomato puree. I do not, in most cases, do anything different. I have dried it and I may dry it again this year. I may make a tomato powder. I have made a tomato powder in the past but found I didn't use it. Perhaps I have found a use for it this time around. So, tomato puree uh, method of preservation that I prefer to use is water bath canning. You can certainly um, pressure can this, but I find that I have much better success when I water bath can. You don't have the siphoning issue so much, and it turns out beautifully. So. Um, this is how we've always processed tomatoes, and uh, we'll continue to do so. And, okay, what do I use this for? <laughs> and the reason it is probably the first one on my list would be that I use it for, obviously, being Italian, we do a lot of pasta. So I use this in a lot of pasta sauce. I can use this in chili, you know, Mark, uh, taught me all about chili. That's one thing that uh, was not on my, um, in my dietary, uh, it just wasn't part of my diet. So, but yes, we use, I can use quite a few of these. When I make chili, we make a fairly large pot and I have canned chili as well. And we'll probably do so because I don't want to eat chili six days in a row. And um, another thing that I do with this is, as I said, I make pasta. So I could make ravioli, I could make cannelloni, I can make linguine, I can make uh, spaghetti and meatballs. So, so many various types of pasta will use this. Oops. <laughs> I also can use it to make pizza sauce. So it's quite a versatile um, staple in my pantry and I'm never without it. Okay, the second item I have chosen to highlight, and when I say first, second, and third items that I'm choosing here, they're not the most important, they're not necessarily the most versatile, 
they're just three that I have chosen for this video and and there are no specific reasons for choosing any of them it's not even um, preservation method so it's just three that I've decided to choose that I felt I had something to say about them so number two on the list would be my dill pickles and the reason I have chosen this is that I have struggled for years to make good pickles and most of the time I just threw them out because they were awful and they were soggy and uh, then I heard that you can add alum to pickles to stop them from being soggy and I really didn't want to add that and then I heard about fermenting and I have a fermented um, cabbage and it turned out really crunchy. You can't stop cabbage from being crunchy when you ferment it for some reason. Uh, at least mine is always crunchy. So I thought I would try fermenting both pickles and beans. And beans was another one of those items that I found very soggy and did not prefer to can because of how it turned out. The pickles are fabulous fermented. Uh, to me, they are, um, I guess, I guess the flavor would be considered very close to kosher pickles. Maybe they are kosher pickles. I don't know. I just know that they're fermented pickles and they taste just like the pickles that you get when you order a hamburger. You know how you'll get a slice of pickle or a wedge of pickle on the side of your hamburger. Well, that's what they taste like, <clears throat> and they're crunchy, so. I don't know if you can hear that, but they certainly are crunchy. Mm. So, Pickles are so easy to make, fermented, and they are so tasty, and I will never make them any other way. I'm not a fan of sweet pickles, but I may try them. I've, uh, I may be missing out by not trying them, so I think this year I may try to make some sweet pickles as well. But my fermented dill pickles Awesome. And probably the third choice that I've picked for this video would be um, apples. And I have here a jar of apples that I used my slicer, core peeler um, unit to get me nice little wedges. And I have just can that as is in some uh, sugar water and just just a light sugar water now this is canned it and only needs to be water bath canned and this can be used now i didn't turn it into applesauce but as it sits all i have to do is open this up use my potato masher and i can turn this into applesauce in minutes so i can use this to make Um, tart fillings, which I have done, okay, and then I've frozen them. <clears throat> if I choose not to can it, I can dehydrate these little wedges <laughs> and make my awesome, awesome little um, dehydrated apple slices. Unfortunately, those are my candy and they never last. So. And that is part of the reason why I have chosen apple as number three, that I find it is also another one of those very versatile uh, items to preserve. And so I both freeze them, sorry, both. I dehydrate, I freeze, and I can apples in various ways. I can turn this into applesauce, but I've chosen to leave it in chunks. I used to do applesauce and chunks, and one I would use as pie filling. I won't use this as pie filling anymore, 
because I have um, learned that Mark prefers shredded apple for pie fillings, for apple pie. So, but in the past I would use this for pie fillings as well. So, I'm wondering if I can go through the process of shredding and canning and then have pie fillings ready uh, pretty much immediately as well. So, we'll try maybe try that again this year. Personally, I prefer to um, preserve foods that turn out just as good or better when they are preserved. Um, obviously, your food will um, change texture, change taste when it is preserved, but that doesn't mean it has to be worse than what it was when it was fresh. In some cases, it's not as good. In some cases, it is better. And in some cases, it is just different. So if you can get the flavor that you like, the texture that you like, by the preservation method that you are using for that particular food, all the better. When we can get um, everything working for us and not end up with food that you don't want to eat because it's too mushy or too whatever. That is the art, I think, of preserving food. It's not so much putting it in a can and putting it through the canner and there you go and trying to find a way to use it. Um, you want taste and you want flavor and you want something that you do want to eat at the end of the day. So, um, I hope this was interesting, fun, and informative and uh, would love to hear from everyone and if I do, Please forgive me if I don't respond to every single one of you. Um, the last video that I put out, I had so many responses, it took me over three hours, closer to four hours to respond to everyone. So I will do my best because I do want you to respond, I do want your input, and it would be an awful lot of fun to see what everyone else has to say. Okay. Okay, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.